Hey guys, so the uh, Cafe Gratitude Inglehart incident that happened a while ago now, like a month ago now, uh, yeah, I'm a little late, but I want to talk about it because I think it's really interesting and I think there are multiple things to talk about, uh, things that I really like talking about, things that are really important to talk about, like uh, advocacy and recidivism. Realizing I sounded really happy, <laughs> like recidivism, yay! No, I just... I think it's important to talk about, but I'm not particularly, yay, more ex-vegans. So for those of you who don't know about this, uh, Matthew and Tercy's Inglehart, they are partial owners of Cafe Gratitude. Cafe Gratitude is a uh, small chain of five, I think five vegan restaurants in uh, California. And uh, they were vegan when they started the chain, when they started open the first restaurant, I believe subsequent uh, Cafe Gratitudes as well. Um, and have been, were vegetarian for almost 40 years, um, eating, I believe, exclusively uh, milk and eggs from their animals on their farm. And then last year, early last year, so over a year ago, they started eating meat, uh, specifically from one of their cows. They posted about this on their blog, uh, Bee Love Farm, I think their farm is called, and that's what the blog's called. And then, uh, like I said, that was over a year ago, and then someone found out about it, I guess. Uh, more people found out about it, again, about a month ago, and it kind of kind of blew up. By blew up, I mean some vegans say that they won't eat at Cafe Gratitude anymore. Uh, you know, others encouraging other vegans uh, and people in general not to eat at Cafe Gratitude. Someone even starting a petition to boycott uh, the chain. And then apparently some sending death threats to the uh, Inglehearts personally. So ultimately, I think this amounts to uh, just really bad publicity for veganism because we don't have enough of that already. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that more as the video goes along. But first, I want to uh, kind of defend, I guess, the uh, the these upset vegans, disgruntled vegans, butthurt vegans, if you will, uh, because I, I do understand the feeling of you know betrayal and even anger that uh, some of these vegans are feeling in defense of butthurt vegans. So as I talked about in uh, this recent video, we vegans are few and far between, and going to a vegan restaurant, it's like kind of a special thing if we're even lucky enough to have a vegan restaurant in our area. Um, and it's particularly special when, you know, the owners or we think the owners are vegan themselves. And this may actually lead us to choose, you know, one restaurant over uh, another restaurant, one vegan restaurant over a vegan restaurant. Again, if we're lucky enough to live in somewhere like LA where we actually have options, right? We can actually choose between one vegan restaurant and another. My point being, I think all things being equal that many of us would rather patronize a vegan restaurant that's run by vegans versus one that's run by non-vegans or specifically in this case, ex-vegans. So when vegans who thought the Inglehearts were vegan as well find out that they aren't even vegetarian, uh, it can feel like betrayal, a feeling that can lead to anger when you know, they think that a portion of their money is going to fund the Inglehart's slaughter of animals for food. Now, someone may argue that this, you know, this feeling of betrayal, anger, whatever, is silly because ultimately this whole situation is really no different from shopping at, you know, or, or patronizing a non-vegan restaurant and ordering a vegan meal there. So like getting a, you know, vegan bean burrito from Taco Bell, right? You know, doing so lets Taco Bell know that there is a demand for this product, uh, thereby encouraging them to produce more of it and thereby increasing accessibility of veganism. But again, the choice is not between Cafe Gratitude and Taco Bell. The choice is between Cafe Gratitude and other vegan establishments. Again, Cafe Gratitude is in LA where there are other <laughs> like vegan, all vegan restaurants. Um, personally, if I have the choice, you know, between a vegan restaurant run by ex-vegans who believe that it's okay to kill animals for food because God ordained it, and a vegan restaurant, you know, run by vegans, again, assuming that all things are equal, right? That like taste is the same and like level of woo is comparable. Um, I would choose the one run by vegans, you know, as long as they are providing a good service, I want to support vegans and vegan businesses. However, there is a difference. There's a big difference between making the personal decision to avoid patronizing Cafe Gratitude or any other vegan restaurant and making your voice heard on the matter, right? And encouraging others to do the same, to boycott the restaurant. Uh, to quote the Eagle Heart's son, 
why would you want to close and boycott, frankly, the largest vegan restaurant group in California? This actually isn't true. Both Veggie Girl and Loving Hut have far more locations than, uh, than Cafe Gratitude in California. But his ultimate point is valid. If we really care about reducing animal suffering, why would we want to hinder a business that makes it easier for people to consume less animal products, thereby reducing animal suffering. I think it's put uh, pretty well by Connor Friedersdorf in his op-ed for the LA Times. Its owners have caused this carnivore to eat many fewer animals this year than I would have otherwise. In defense of tone policing. I'm not suggesting that I think Connor and other carnivores are going to stop eating at Cafe Gratitude because of some silly vegan boycott. You know, going by the figures that uh, several vegan companies, restaurants, uh, have given, and as well as just the tininess of the vegan population in general, uh, it's highly likely that the vast majority of Cafe Gratitude customers, like 70 to 80 percent, are not vegan. They probably just want to eat something, you know, they perceive as healthier than what they normally eat, or just something different than what they normally eat. Um, I seriously doubt that these people are going to be persuaded to stop eating somewhere they enjoy because vegans told them to, because people they perceive, very likely perceive as militant, uncompromising, or even just stupid, told them to. What it will do, and what it has already done, given the numerous reports on this issue, is yet again make it so easy for journalists to paint vegans in a negative light. I mean, try to pretend that you are not vegan, that you are not even vegetarian, and you hear that vegans are boycotting vegan restaurants. It sounds fucking crazy. So I get criticized fairly frequently for bringing this up, uh, this, you know, idea that it's important to discuss perception, you know, non-vegans' perception of veganism, specifically of vegans. And, you know, people who disagree with me will say that, look, you know, we aren't responsible for someone's decision uh, not to go vegan, and someone who says they won't go vegan because a vegan was mean to them, it's just a lame excuse. And, you know, I would say that, yes, we all are ultimately responsible for our actions, and yes, it is a lame excuse, but this doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the consequences of this alienating behavior from some of us, or behavior that, again, many seem, see as fucking crazy, the consequences of this are there regardless. As vegans, we know how little facts matter to non-vegans. I mean, many of us became vegan not because of facts, but because of emotional appeals, because of personal um, accounts because of personal experiences with specific vegans. When person after person after person tells me that Freely and other, you know, vegans who they deem, you know, militant and just vitriolic, uh, turn them off of veganism, but now they are working toward, you know, vegetarianism or veganism because of, you know, my more friendly videos or the vegan strategist articles or Dr. Melanie Joy's presentations, etc. Shouldn't we take that seriously? And when we can, like, quite easily avoid doing something that makes veganism look unpalatable, i.e. fucking crazy, uh, like not creating petitions to boycott vegan restaurants, shouldn't we do that? The Inglehearts and recidivism. So we can talk about our personal frustration with the Inglehearts, and we can also talk about the Inglehearts personally, their, you know, personal decision to choose to eat animals again, and whether that's right or wrong. And yes, it's wrong, assuming they are killing animals or paying to have animals killed, you know, just for food. And according to their blog posts, uh, which I read through all of them over the last year and a half almost, they are. We can also talk about their why, the reason for doing so, their circle of life defense, which is personally very weird and gross to me, particularly coming from vegans, people you think would, uh, know how ridiculous that argument is. But again, the reality is that the Inglehearts are helping to provide a place for both vegans and non-vegans to enjoy, apparently, really delicious vegan food. I'm not saying that this makes them saints or anything, it's a business, they do make money from this, it's in no way altruistic, neither is this channel, I make my living doing this. Uh, but the consequences of of cafe gratitude, again, providing tasty food for both vegans and non-vegans can't be denied. However, this doesn't mean that we can't talk about this, that we can't learn something from this, from the Inglehearts, you know, decision to consume meat again after, again, almost 40 years. Uh, namely that, look, 
no vegetarian or vegan, no matter how committed, how long they have been vegetarian or vegan, is immune to recidivism. And I, I really want to talk about this here because I really wonder how much uh, the Inglehart's weird backwards sense of ethics had to do with their decision to resume meat eating. Given the names of the meals of the uh, dishes at Cafe Gratitude, like I am humble and I am transformed. Yeah, you have to say it that way. Uh, as well as the rationale that the, that the Inglehearts use, uh, again, to defend eating meat again, um, the circle of life thing and God made it so, it's clear that they are rather new age in certain aspects and that they, they really don't have a good grasp of philosophy, of ethics, of reality in general. Um, and it's also clear that they are using their belief in God to justify doing something wrong rather than as like inspiration to do right, to inspire other people to do right, which is, it's disappointing. They also don't seem to have a very good grasp of environmental sustainability since they adhere to Alan Savory's unsupported pseudoscientific holistic management system, uh, basically that grazing animals like cows are necessary to uh, prevent and even reverse desertification and to combat climate change, holy moly. Uh, problem is it's contradicted by actual evidence and is supported only by anecdotes as well as people's desire to eat more meat, of course. Um, I talk about this at the end, uh, just a little bit towards the end of this video, and I'll also include a link to a really good piece on uh, holistic management and on Alan Savory himself in the description. I think I forgot to say that part. So ultimately, I think the Inglehearts, like many people, uh, they go more by feel. You know, veganism felt right to them in the past, so they went vegan. Eating meat feels right to them now, so they eat meat. Again, pure speculation on my part, but I wanted to bring it up because I think that many ethical vegans, I think that they, that we, uh, we tend to think that we are immune <laughs> to recidivism, to becoming ex-vegans, that it's the dietary vegans, it's the plant-based vegans. You know, they're the ones who go back to eating animal products. This clearly is not the case, and the Inglehearts are just one more example of that, but they may be an example because their former understanding of what makes harming and killing animals for food wrong was wrong. <laughs> their understanding was wrong. Again, seems to be based on feeling, you know, feels wrong to do it versus logic and facts. You know, animals are sentient. They feel pain. They can suffer. It's wrong to cause unnecessary suffering harming and eating, killing animals for food when plant alternatives are available causes unnecessary suffering. Therefore, in such a situation, eating animals is wrong. Feelings are fleeting, logic is not. That's, that's basically all I'm saying here. You know, a vegan philosophy based on feeling is on much shakier grounds than one based on a consistent ethical framework. Or maybe the Inglehart's return to eating meat had nothing to do with ethics. Maybe it had to do with health or just a desire to eat meat again. You know, looking at the Cafe Gratitude uh, menu on their website, it seems to be rather like cleanse and detox kind of focus. They even advocate for that kind of stuff, more on that later. Um, and very like whole foods based, there's no mock meats or anything like that. You know, if the Inglehart's were eating this way, uh, it wouldn't be surprising to me if Maybe they weren't eating properly, maybe not getting enough protein for one thing. Um, you know, maybe they just didn't find it that satisfying after a while. That wouldn't be shocking either. And so they had a desire for more dense proteins like meat or whatever. Um, and so maybe that was the reason why they really started eating meat. And then the, the weird moral justification, the circle of life, God ordained it shit came later on, right? As well as the belief that they have now that beef is in important nutritional element. But again, as if I haven't said it enough, you know, I don't really know why the Inglehearts went back to eating meat and I don't really care beyond being able to talk about it, beyond recidivism, beyond being able to, uh, you know, for myself and to discuss it with you and to help us all uh, avoid it. Otherwise, this is an unethical decision that the Inglehearts have made for themselves, not for Cafe Gratitude. Cafe Gratitude is still vegan and according to the Inglehearts will remain so. We can say that this decision to eat meat again uh, is a step backward, ethically speaking, for the Inglehearts themselves and it is. 
But at the end of the day, cafe gratitude has a far bigger impact on reducing animal suffering than the personal actions and influences of the Inglehearts ever could. Finally, if we are going to criticize cafe gratitude for something, why not criticize the restaurant for something that actually deserves criticizing? Like the fact that they promote juice cleanses and they even have on the website a tab called the Detox Market with products like the Clean Cleanse for $425. Just saying. So that's it. Uh, the Inglehearts are wrong about just so many things. But Cafe Gratitude is making veganism more accessible. But that doesn't mean that you are obligated to patronize the restaurant. And if you don't want to patronize them, Please think about the broader consequences of your actions before you publicly declare, you know, a boycott, a boycott, a boycott of a vegan restaurant. And please think about the broader consequences of your actions before you like, you know, send death threats to people. Seriously, if that, if that is happening, which I wouldn't be surprised, this is the internet, uh, stop please doing that. <laughs> Although. I mean, if you're the type of person who would send a death threat, you probably don't really care what I have to say. You probably don't even care about this video. You are probably not watching this video. So I guess I didn't need to say that. Also, seriously, if you have access to more than one vegan restaurant, I mean, like, please realize how fortunate you are. Um, I'm sure you already do, but if you don't, it's, uh, it's a really cool thing. You know, some of it, many of us don't have any vegan restaurants. Some of us do have. I have a couple, uh, but they are by no means perfect. Uh, one of them has a bunch of tasty mock meat shit. It's awesome. But the service uh, and the atmosphere. Mm. And then the other one is very clean and nice, almost like corporate-y. Uh, but it's like juice cleanse shit and like expensive smoothies and some sandwiches and stuff and everything's just overpriced. Honestly, I'd rather eat at P.F. Chang's. <laughs> and that's truly really it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I would like to hear what you think. Uh, I think I changed my view a lot after writing it. This was just going to be a short video. I start a lot of scripts like that and it's always over 10 minutes. I just can't, I can't do it. I can't do a sub 10 minute video. It's not possible for me apparently. But I started it and I was more along the lines of just like, this is stupid stop, they are, it's a vegan company, you're just going to encourage people to not go there. And then I started to think about it, and it's like, well, if most of the patrons aren't vegan, do I really think they're going to not, that they're, what, going to join in on the boycott? This doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't really think it's going to hurt the business very much. Um, so I had to, I thought about it a lot. It actually took me a lot longer um, to to write this than I thought it would. So uh, hopefully it is interesting. And of course, reading through all the blog posts uh, since the Inglehearts first announced eating meat. I read every single one of them uh, just to see if I could find anything else, you know. Um, so that was fun. It took a... It wasn't fun, I'm lying, but it took a bit of time. <sighs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will have a new video very soon.